Now here's another model kit from Games Workshop from the past that I'm sure you won't want to miss. Coming up next. Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu and are you looking for another great model kit for your Warhammer Age of Sigmar battles or even for like Middlehammer or something earlier? Well, today we're going to be checking out the Scourge Runner Chariot, also known as the Drake Spawn Chariot. Well, because you can build them either way. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The harsh frontier port of Anvilgard borders the sweltering jungles of the Charwin coast in Akshui, a region known for its monstrous wildlife. Though the city presents a somber traditionalist front, scores of elven outcasts have found opportunity here, including beast hunters, corsairs, and the secretive leaders of the Darkling Covens. Today, we will be unboxing the old Dark Elf Scourge Runner Chariot, which can now be built as either a Drakespawn Chariot or the Scourge Runner Chariot for use in Warhammer Age of Sigmar in your Cities of Sigmar army lists. The back of the box shows the optional Dark Elves Cold One Chariot, now known as the Drakespawn Chariot. And as you can see, this is still on the square base since this box is an older issue of the kit. On the second part of the box, we have some nice close-up images of each of the riders and their amazing cloaks as well as the different colors that were used at the time, which have now been replaced and renamed, but they are still the basis of the base colors. First in the box is our amazing instruction sheet, which shows us how to build either the Dark Elves Scourge Runner Chariot, which is being pulled by a team of horses, or to build the Dark Elves Cold One Chariot, which is being pulled by a team of lizards. Step one shows the chassis assembly for our chariot. So here we have the center brace, as well as the platform and these horns. Once you have that together, you want to place the wheel in position without gluing. That is followed by the gluing on of the wheel arch assembly. And your completed sub-assembly should look like this. Once you have finished this sub-assembly, you now have the option of building the Scorch Runner chariot or the Dark Elves Cold One chariot. Step 3 shows the side panels of our chariot and the blades being glued on, and once you're finished that, it should look something like this. For the opposite side, we show the rest of the chariot being glued together with its spikes, and the finished result should look like this. To pull the chariot, you need a good team of horses, so here is our first horse in two pieces being glued together for a finished result of this. And our second dark steed goes together in the same way for a result of this. Finally, both steeds are tethered up to the yoke, and this is the result. Now, getting into the Age of Sigmar for a moment, this is what they call the hook spear, and here we can see it being attached onto the back of the chariot. The Ravager Harpoon is the next vicious weapon, according to the Age of Sigmar War Scroll for the Scourge Runner Chariot, and as we can see, it also gets attached onto the chariot on the opposite side of the wheel. Next up, we have the assembly stages for our Beastmaster Driver assembly. So you get a body, a hand with the reins, a head with uh, some hair, and an arm for the whip. The finished result is this. An optional weapon for the Beastmaster crew is the repeater crossbow, which this is the assembly for. The sub-assembly for our second crew member is very straightforward. You have a body, a head, and a two-piece dragon scale cloak, and your finished result should look like this. Once you have those pieces sub-assembled, you can now add on that great repeater crossbow. Our next assembly shows the location of the crew for the chariot, and this is the location for the driver, with a little hole located there for the foot to go into, and then here we have the two leads going onto the back of the horses. The result should look like this. And in this panel, we have the option of either build of the crew member holding that harpoon gun, and then they glue onto here. So this is the different variations of that crew member and how he should look. Once the chariot is assembled and everyone's glued in place, you can easily drop it onto the rectangular shaped base. And if you want to run this for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, you're going to have to find the size for the oval base it replaces. The finished result should look something like this.
Next up, we get into building the Drake Spawn Chariots. Now, this was the instructions that were missing out of the current Anvil Guard set. You cannot build this as the Drake Spawn Chariot. Well, you could, but you'd have to really guess in that box. But here, I have the instructions for us to review. So if you're looking at this from that Anvil Guard set, I've just given you the answer as to how to build this into the Drake Spawn Chariot. So to begin with, we have our Drake Spawn Chariot sides gluing together. And there are quite a bit to this. You have these little spikes that are sitting on here and this here. So these are known as scythe runners. And according to the war scroll, it says each time a model from this unit finishes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll a dice. On a two up, the enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. If this unit has more than one model, roll to determine if mortal wounds are inflicted after each model completes its charge move, but do not allocate the mortal wounds until after all of the models in the unit have been moved. So as we can hear from that, this is quite the deadly chariot on charges. Our second panel shows the opposite side being all glued together, and this is the result you want once you're finished. Now since this is the more ferocious chariot, we have our cold ones being glued together, and as you can see these models are in four pieces. You get the right side of the body, the left side of the body, and the two head pieces here, which will give you a result of this. Our second cold one, or Drake Spawn, will glue together in much the same way for a finished result of this. Once you have your two cold ones, or Drake Spawns as they're now known, glued together, you can attach them up to the yoke of the chariot. This will be your finished result for this step. On the back of our Drake Spawn Chariot, we can attach this ferocious looking banner. And our two barbed spears, which the end result should look like this. These four steps show our Knight Charioteer with spear assembly. So you have his back, his front, then you can attach his head and his hair. And here he is holding the spear with two hands. Panel 17 shows optional heads and crests that you can use on your crew members. Here we have the Knight Charioteer, and this is an interesting model because in Warhammer Fantasy, as you can see, he had three weapon choices. He has this sword, a mace, and this barbed spear. However, for Age of Sigmar, the only weapon it shows that you can have in this is the barbed spear. So we would have to discard these two pieces and just build him with the barbed spear for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So once you get him with his weapon, you can then add on the armor. And then in this panel, we have the heads, which you could choose out of step 17. The finished result should look like this. Once we get our Knight Charioteer assembled, we can get him ready to drive the chariot by putting on the hand with the harnesses in it. And then attaching him to the floor of the chariot, much like the Scourge Runner driver. And here we have the assembly of our Knight Charioteer being dropped in place with his spear sticking out. The finished result should look like this. And once you are finished with that assembly, then we can get into our final assembly by dropping the chariot onto the square base. And our result should look like this. Here we have our parts tree with both the Drake Spawn and the Scourge Runner Chariot sides, as well as the platform, the wheel, and the wheel covers here, and some of the heads for our Drake Spawns, and then all the different weaponry that goes with the chariot, including that yoke and harness. There's our center section. Looks very much like a motorbike in a lot of ways. Again, you can see that very nice detail work on here with the little spears and the scale on the chariot. Turning the chariot over, you can actually see the wood grain on the Drake Spawn chariot end. And again, very nicely done. Really like the work. This model kit came out around 2013 or so, between 2011 and 2013, and it has held up very well. I do believe this is an earlier edition of this kit. However, much like in the Anvil Guard unit, you can see these are still amazing models. Our next parts tree includes the cold ones and the dark steeds. And again, you can see the great detail on them. The scales on the cold ones or drake spawn are actually really nice. These really look like dinosaurs and would 
be amazing just to have sitting around on the table if you decide to build the horses instead, which again are really awesome. They got that screech on them. <laughs> and then some scales to match the chariot. Again, very nice on the detail. Little harpoons and everything are everywhere on them. Amazing stuff by Games Workshop. Even if you don't play the game, these would be awesome just to build to paint as display units or even as a diorama if you're into fantasy dioramas. This is the model kit for you. Our final parts tree includes all the figures and banners and remaining weaponry in order to drive and run the chariot. So again, you can see the nice detail on the cloak, the banner, and the crew members with the scales are always nice. And then the rest of the armor. Turning this over, you can see the nice chainmail on there. Again, very good detailing from Games Workshop. Just love the figures and models in all these lines. Most amazing product. And last but not least, we get this amazing Dark Elves transfer sheet, which is not really current to the Warhammer Age of Sigmar, but you can see all the nice white script in here, the different logos that they had. There are 10 of these so that you can make up different units of uh, foot soldiers, which of course are not included in this chariot kit. However, again, the artistry and the colors are very vibrant on this decal sheet. I thought I would share the War Scrolls for the Warhammer Age of Sigmar version of this kit, which of course is a Drakespawn Chariots. Here it has a move of 10, wounds of 6, bravery of 7, and a 4-up save. It's armed with a repeater crossbow, the barbed spear, ferocious jaws, which of course would be on the Drakespawn. It says, a unit of Drake Spawn Chariots has any number of models. Each Drake Spawn Chariot has a crew armed with a barbed spear and a repeater crossbow. For the mount, this unit's Drake Spawn attack with their ferocious jaws. Then it has the scythe runners, which I read earlier. Each time a model from this unit finishes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within an inch of that model and roll a dice. On a two up, the enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. If this, this unit has more than one model, roll to determine if mortal wounds are inflicted after each model completes its charge move, but do not allocate mortal wounds until after all the models in the unit have moved. What they're saying here is if you have two or three Drake Spawn Chariots in a unit and they charge in, then you would roll your mortal wounds per each Drake Spawn Chariot. This war scroll is used with Order Serpentis units. Our second war scroll is for the Scourge Runner Chariots. This is the one with the horses. Its move is 12, it's got a 5-up save, wounds characteristic of 6, and a bravery of 6. We have the Ravager Harpoon and Repeater Crossbow. The melee weapons are the Hook Spear and the Vicious Bite. A unit of Scourge Runner Chariots has any number of models. Each Scourge Runner Chariot has a crew armed with a Hook Spear, Ravager Harpoon, and Repeater Crossbow. This unit's Dark Steeds attack with their Vicious Bite. High Beastmaster. One model in this unit can be a High Beastmaster. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made with that model's missile weapons. So that means, again, if you have two or three of these, you can pick one of them to be the High Beastmaster. The abilities is to lay the beast low. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a Ravager Harpoon is six, that attack inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. Do not make a wound or save roll. So again, one of these deadly things, the sixes are spicy. This model is used with the Scourge Privateers, which of course were from that Anvil Guard Star Collecting box, which I reviewed earlier, and I'll leave a little or link for that up here. And that completes our look at our Drake Spawn Chariot, or the Scourge Runner Chariot, all depending on how you built it. And if you've built this model kit in the past, or use it in your current armies, Please let us know how it works in combat, as well as how you enjoyed the build. We'd also like to see your pictures of your build on our Facebook page, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review where we got to see the Drake Spawn Chariot, also known as the Scourge Runner Chariot. And if you love these great model kits, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you're the first one to know about it. And until next time, everyone, happy model building!